more of a call into what you could say, call a spiritual community in the sense that um, I feel like, for me it's been over the years really feeling like everyone I meet is my community and the whole world is my community, so there's no borders or boundaries in my awareness. But just in terms of practicing A Course in Miracles, I think for those of you that have done it as a self-study book and that you've done it in, in terms of groups, you see the value of those groups. Even if you just meet once a week or a couple times a week, you know, you can feel the synergy of coming together and sharing that purpose. And uh, a friend from Colombia, she's ready to start a Spanish Course in Miracles here in Sydney, maybe in this very building. So it's just this desire to come together with like-minded people and it just is like giving your mind permission to share and extend these ideas. And in terms of community, um, actually living together or in close proximity, that seems to have a great benefit and value as well. And so that's what I feel like this year is going to be pretty much a focus on that for me in, uh, in the United States. And it feels like there's some, some little rumblings of a community down here in, in Australia, and then maybe Costa Rica, Spain, and, and Canada. So it'll be fun for me to uh, visit the little communities and, and watch the little seeds nurture and grow. And it's just a way of uh, pretty intense mirroring when you're working with these ideas with a small group of people, it, you know, it can be a real speed up as far as the practical application, whether it's a course group or whether it's a small uh, community. So the basic teachings of the course and the teachings I've been sharing is, is that, that you are responsible for your state of mind 100% responsible for your state of mind. And this pathway is a pathway to take you into your mind and allow the unconscious beliefs and thoughts and emotions to come up into awareness where you can release them. You can't really release something that you're not even aware of. And so the unconscious mind is basically uh, being raised up into awareness and your responsibility really is just to allow this to occur, give yourself permission for it to occur, and as best you can, try not to hide and protect emotions and, and thoughts and beliefs when they're coming to the surface. And so that's quite a, quite a process really, because it can get very intensely emotional. And um, there can be the temptation to just kind of go back into denial and repression or to just project out these intense emotions onto the world. And just by projecting them or denying them doesn't release them. So this is really a, like a precious opportunity for us to come together and go into the mind that way. So if we start discussing some of these topics and themes and you, you don't understand or you need another example, just let me know because we use a lot of metaphors and we use a lot of examples, practical examples, because that's what we're used to. We're used to the symbols of time and space, we're used to the personal perspective, and even though the Holy Spirit is taking us to a much higher perspective, that we need to be very practical as we loosen from these old uh, perceptions and come into this higher and higher state of mind. And uh, we just have to go step by step. So we're all joined in that. Um, for me too, it's, it's beautiful in the sense that um, I live with a, a fairly small community. And um, though we have a lot of interactions with people all over the world, that of course is really saying, you know, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to use the relationships that are in your life, because those are the mirrors. And uh, it's just a speed up from the old way of going off into caves and, you know, having large amounts of meditation. You know, when you have interactions with people, you have a lot of opportunity to really see what's down there in the unconscious mind. 
because whatever you're perceiving in your brother and sister is what you still have in your mind and you just see it as if it's outside and uh, that's where the anger gets generated and the frustration and the fear and the more we practice this the more we start to realize that we really aren't at the mercy of people or relationships and we really start to realize we're not at the mercy of the world either that we have we can take full responsibility for our state of mind and become empowered by this mind training that we're doing. So I just can't emphasize enough how important the mind training is and, and giving yourself permission to put that as a top priority in your life will have enormous benefits in your spiritual journey. And that was the thing I had to do is it just you have to be practical, you have to handle things that the ego has set up you know, you can't just ignore them, you have to still handle them, but the more you clear away the filter of your mind, the more you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, and the more that the Holy Spirit can handle these things for you, so that judgment through you rather than by you occurs. The Holy Spirit's judgment. Where to go, what to say, what to do, you know, all the great practicalities that are so essential can become clearer and clearer in your mind. And then life will seem to get easier and easier, your experience of life, as you learn to flow with the Spirit and let decisions be made with the Holy Spirit instead of by the ego or with the ego. It just gets easier and easier.